What's up guys? I'm Jared with Orion Training Group. This is Jason Ransom of Ransom Tactical Solutions. And today we're going to talk about footwork. And we've talked about footwork a lot in other videos. We really want to get into the nitty gritty of it, namely on the path of least resistance entry and on a button hook entry. We're showing you on a center fed door. Center fed meaning that the door is in the center of the wall that it's mounted. Not a whole lot changes on corner fed. We may do a separate video on that, but we really just want to get into the basic principles of it talk about some body mechanics. And if you check out what we got on the floor here, we're gonna be calling this uh, Tactical Twister. Tactical Twister. Because <laughs> we wanted to make it as simple as possible for people to be able to visually understand. You have to teach on more than one method, right? So uh, take it away, Jay. Yeah, so this, uh, this kind of came to me. Um, Jared and I were driving back from a class and I was, we always get AARs or after action reports of, man, I really didn't understand the footwork or I didn't know that there was so, so much, much went into yeah. footwork and proper uh, proper foot placement at the threshold. So we set this up. Um, the gray is going to represent basically where I start or my starting position or where I get set up to play twister, right? So think about my strong foot being back here and I always like to start at the closest uh, to the threshold, inboard foot closest inboard to the leg. wall, closest to the threshold. So we've lined it up here so people can kind of get the idea of how to stand it. You notice uh, we're on the Mantis system, so guns are inert. Um, flagged. Rendered safe. Yes. So I get set up and, you know, if you, if you try to get a little too close, you may actually be protruding past the door frame, which we don't want to do. So we get set up like so, my strong foot's back. Uh, again, that uh, inboard foot closest to the wall, closest to the door frame. And I get set up to take that first step in the center of the doorway, right? See this, he's center of the doorway. Foot right here. I'm trying to split like Jared said, as much as I possibly can in the middle of the doorway. I'm also keeping my hips pointed this direction so the next step when it comes through, I'm angling this direction here to bring me through the doorway, through the threshold. So what that would look like at real slow speed is getting set up here, taking a step forward. At this point in time, probably bring the gun either over my shoulder or under the armpit. It's a couple of different ways to talk about that. We've, we've shown numerous. So I'll bring the gun over the top of my shoulder. That next step goes in through the doorway. Now from this position right here, I am actually got my corner cleared. And if need be, if I can run the gun all the way back out because I'm through the threshold and then move in the path of least resistance, establish my point of domination inside of the room, clear my sector of fire, continue to move and look for work. One thing to add on that, Jay said point of domination and we use that, that or scanning point as a verbal uh, indicator of where you stop. Now there is an entire doctrine called point of domination and we don't mean that because anybody who's seen point of domination doctrine, which is kind of like what they teach in the army basic training, um, you're sending dudes two corners deep, right? So your point of domination would actually be over there. Right over here, for there, for their, right. for their particular method. For their particular method. Right. This is actually reflective of a doctrine called limited penetration. Um, you which see is that, what you're normally used to, right? That's it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you end up only two steps in the room. If you notice when Jason placed that inboard foot, he was here, he's splitting the, fr the, the frame and he takes two steps into the room and the corner's clear, or the, the corner's clear, the room's clear and he's checked on his buddy. Well, it's no different on the other side. We're not running all the way to the far side of the room like some doctrines have because the context that we're showing you here is two people entering a room, you know, continental US with residential settings, furniture, beds, and all that other crap that you find in rooms, you're often not going to be able to run the walls to the second deep corner because there's not the ability to do so. And we're not putting five dudes into a room. Um, that's military tactics for a different setting. Well, and the thing, the three things that we always talk about, what dictates what type of entry, what type of movement we do in yeah. the, through the threshold or through the doorway or what? Uh, Manpower, mission, mm -hmm. and environment. That was like Dora the Explorer moment, you know? Right. <laughs> we set the state of the camera back, and just... <laughs> sit there and wait for a minute for them right. to answer. That's right. Manpower, mission, and environment. So you want to show them the button hook now? Yeah, man. Yeah. And I'm going to do that a little bit more at speed so Mitch okay. can kind of um, see what it looks like as I come through maybe on that. Um, a little more rapid. Yep, a little more rapid. Yep, cool. So again, we get set up like this. I'm leaning, I'm leaning into the wall to see as much as I possibly can in that dead space or that area of the corner that I can't see. So that's why I have my foot here so I can lean over to see what's going on. Again, as I start to move, take that sh the stock out of my shoulder, clear that corner, clear my sector fire, continue to move and look for work. When you do this properly, you should be able to clear your corner from right here. So I'm minimizing Boom. my exposure 
and maximizing what I can see. So when that gun comes up, if there is a problem, I can simply drive the gun <laughs> into that problem, finish it out, wind up in that, uh, that area like what we discussed, that point of domination or limited penetration inside of that room. Yeah, one more small thing. Absolutely. Will talks about it a lot, God bless him, but delivering your body, he delivers his favorite word, uh, delivering your, your processor, right? And one of the things he harped on in one of our recent videos we released is limiting your hips by turning your foot. This is exaggerated, but you're turning your foot so that it, I can't turn to my left. Right now, just we'll do another door explore at the moment. Why is that tape not way over here? We don't want you to end up in the middle of the room. Why is the gray tape that indicates your, your point of domination, your scanning point, not over here? Well, we don't want you to be in a, an area where you can't get an overlapping sector of fire. So if Jason is there and I'm his number two guy and I've backed him up, the reason his little square is right there is so that we have overlapping sectors. But if he went the wrong way and ended up in the middle of the room and there's something to the right side, well, now I can't shoot over there and he screwed me over and he screwed himself over. So one of the things you can do when you're doing this footwork, and Jason's done it, he just hadn't set it yet, when you come through, that foot needs to be pointed the direction you want to go. And that's going to keep my hips in the direction I want to go. We will see a lot of students, when they break this plane, they turn this way, and their hips and their feet are leading them into the middle of the room. So a really simple way to stop that is be deliberate about your foot placement. So when you break that plane, your foot is pointed the direction you actually want to deliver those hips, which is going to deliver your eyes and your gun to that corner. Easy day, right? Yeah, I think so. So um, the blue that we actually got set up, there's a couple of ways in Mitchell want you to take a look at this out here because we can actually set up for a button hook, blue for button hook. I say again, blue for button hook. Yeah. <laughs> One more time, Jay. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so we get set up like this. We can have our feet in the same place. Um, we're actually can, gonna take what Jared describes as kind of a false step. And that false step just means here, I'm gonna take a step forward and remember what he said. He literally just touched on it about turning our hips. So if I point this foot this way, I'm exaggerating it, but it is gonna be pointed towards that wall to deliver the hips this way. So I'm not facing outboard, I'm facing this way when I get ready to do that button hook in this manner like so. So we can get set up like this. I'll show you one way. Um, taking that false step forward like so, bringing that other foot around, the gun's gonna to have to come out of the shoulder to deliver it back into the area. Notice where my feet are lining up here into that point of domination on the other side of the room at limited penetration to scan that sector of fire. So that's one way we can get our feet set up to do a button hook. The other is be basically to switch our feet at this, uh, at this entry point before we get ready to go through that threshold. What that will look like is simply just alternating our feet like this. And again, now this foot is gonna come forward just like it is right here to deliver my hips towards that area. My other foot's gonna land there and deliver me into that, uh, that room there. So we get set up again, making sure the muzzle's not past the door frame because we don't want to um, expose ourselves. That foot goes here, gun comes out of the shoulder. I start to rotate the gun and my hips. Notice everything is pointing in this direction to allow me to be able to get in. Um, clearing that corner again from right. So we'll get lined up in my footwork here. From right here, that corner's clear as we move through. Get on my point of domination, scan that room, scan that sector of fire, continue to move and look for work. Can you watch it from in there as well, Mitchell, and see? And one of the things I want you guys that are watching to notice is as Jason, he's gonna do it real slow again, as he begins to translate through this plane, the why behind him breaking the gun down over his shoulder, and this is not really part of this video, we talk about footwork, but it's just a good point, people are gonna ask about it. I always gotta try and anticipate y'all's needs, so try it again, Jay. When he, when he breaks that plane, notice how his muzzle is coming away from his body, so you're not seeing it until you're starting to see him be able to present to a threat. Do it one more time for me, Jay, and yep. mess it up. Keep it in your shoulder. Keep it in my shoulder, okay. Now, watch what happens when he keeps it in his shoulder. How long are you as the viewer seeing his muzzle? So this is done on purpose, on purpose. See and how much- From your point of view, you can see up to the middle of the rifle past this threshold, which yep. is a no-no. We, we want to minimize what the dead space or that person over there can see and maximize what we can see. So we have to maybe take the gun out of our shoulder, manipulate our hips. Under um, the shoulder. Maybe, yeah, know. go under the shoulder. So I'll do it under the shoulder so they can yeah, get a, a quick peek at that. And again, we've done other videos on this, but we want you to see it applied with the footwork as well. So right now the gun is, it's in my shoulder. Yep. So we're gonna take it out, go underneath the armpit the same way here and drive that gun back up that direction. So we try to minimize what the person in the dead space or the unclear area yep. has advantage of uh, to be able to see. And the only other thing to sprinkle in here, because I know we're gonna get the question is, why didn't you center check? 
Why didn't you pan? Why didn't you pie? Uh, because that's not what the video is about. You gotta take a, take a minute and chill. So this video is about how to actually dive into the room after you've done whatever your exterior threshold assessment is, or if you're doing a dynamic entry, what do we always preach? You have to have a dynamic supporting element, right? Right, so, well, e even if I did do a power pan, my feet this are still same. gonna line up in the same exact direction. So right. this video is really breaking down for Tactical Twister, um, is breaking down why we harp so much on footwork. Um, everybody's uh, after action review is, man, I, I really just didn't understand how much went into footwork. Well, mm -hmm. these things you can practice at home. Not to say you have to put tape all over your daggum floor, but you can work on footwork around a threshold. I use, I got Instagram videos on, um, I put cones in my garage and I work on this exact same thing in those cones in the garage and it's, it's easy peasy. You want to try it with both of us? Sure. You can flow and I'll button hook behind you. Yeah, yeah. It'll put in context for people how it's the exact same thing. Yeah, do we do right. want to show them the <laughs> the pan over so they can, oh look, he panned <laughs> and his feet lined up in the same spot. <laughs> well, yeah, so watch guys, we'll, we'll just throw a pan in there, why not? All right, and then I'd say do a heavy side, that way you guys are both following the same table. For sure, yep. right? All right. Yeah, so a, a pan, again, this is not a video on panning, but we're gonna talk about if Jason pans over to one side or the other. Yep, I'm, I'm gonna come over there so my yep. feet will literally yep. line up in the exact same spot, yeah? So we start small, remember, now my, my strong foot and on my right side is leaning in so I can try to see what's going on in that deep corner. Once I get ready to move, and Mitchell laughed about this earlier, I'm gonna redirect my hips <laughs> and turn those hips this way because I wanna walk that direction, right? And I'm gonna start to turret or turn this direction all the way over then once I get set up, my feet are literally set up for in, in the boxes that we made for Twister to get myself ready for room entry. So whether he wanted to button hook or flow, and he would be correct either one he does because he's the first man, right? He can now do either one based on this tape overlay we've given you guys. So I'm going to be right behind you, Jay. Right. Let's just say this was a heavy side entry. So we did conduct a pan. But now, because our SOP, we're going to both hit from the same side of the threshold. So I'll give him that squeeze. I'm coming towards uh, right directly towards Mitchell. Yeah. As he moves, I'm just going to do the same thing that the tape said the other guy on this side should do. Does that make sense? So the footwork is the same, whether you've done a pan or a pie or whatever else, to get to the point at which you deliver into the room. Okay? It, it, it's not complicated. But when people watch this, they want more context, but they don't want to watch the other detailed videos on the context. So just to sprinkle a little bit of that in there. Uh, and again, somebody's going to ask, what if I have a pistol? Well, the pistol doesn't change your footwork any. So we'll talk about that as well. All right. And again, we showed it at the beginning of the video, but it's been flagged out of battery. Let me see that OTG green. Oh, Lord. yeah. This is from uh, United Firearms. Uh, we did a class with a private class with them and it's, it's really good work. Um, this thing is dirty because I use it and carry it a lot. So don't, don't be mad at me. Um, come over here where you can see Mitch. Is the forward going to change any on a flow with a pistol? Oh boy, let's see. No. All right, button hook, coming back out. Is it going to change any on a button hook? While well, I'm taking that false step, if I'm starting in this position, if I switch my feet, I'm still taking that step. But what am I doing with the pistol? I'm bringing it down closer to my body. Why is that? Well, I'm changing that rotational axis because I don't want to present this to the room like I'm on the flat range. Yeah, some right? people call that a, uh, compressed. a compressed ready. Yep. Um, uh, cop world, they call it low ready. Right. Um, so uh, whatever you want to call it, just not protruding, you know, not sticking those elbows out there, bringing the gun in tight, just like you would with the rifle. It's not stuck out the entire time, you're bringing it in tight. So show us that button hook real quick, Jerry. Yeah, so same difference, right? And I actually prefer switching my feet because it, it allows my hips to open up more. I don't like being here and then having to overextend. So my preference, if I know I'm gonna do a button hook, I'll switch that, those feet, bringing that pistol down and in, hitting that corner, and then I'm checking on my buddy after scanning my sector. Easy you, day, right? You know, a lot of this, um, you know, Jared's real big on stretching and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit up in age, Yoga. so stretching and being flexible in this, uh, in this environment is really key. Um, you know, eat healthy, uh, get a good diet, work out, get some sun, mm -hmm. you know, touch grass, touch iron. That's right? it, man. Uh, and a lot of this, you know, whenever we're, we're maneuvering through these doorways, you'll see a lot of hip movements, um, whether it be with the hips, the lower extremities while moving, you know, getting your foot, your feet set up for a proper entry and also turning with the hips or leaning in. So you're, you're actually feeding that gun and head and eyes 
into there so we're leaning at the hips to drive that gun in there to clear that area to clear that sector fire a little bit quicker yeah so, so when we get in solo yeah, yeah flexibility is key man yeah and rap the rapidity of movement the well, movement no. of movement rapidity of movement i think the so, mustache inhibited your flow of words no, no, no yeah i'm not used to the just the weight distribution being up high my head's not balanced now <laughs> so uh, you're tactical turtle all the time now <laughs> yeah <laughs> the amount of uh homoerotic comments that were on my instagram Whoa. today i'm not mad at them either that's just the nature of them uh, accept them for what they are. So I was talking to some dudes with some funny green hats at a class uh, the other day, um, and one of the things they're really big on is rifle position. And one of the things they were talking about is the importance of hip mobility for that rifle position. I'm not gonna get into any more detail than that, but what Jason just talked about, and I wanted to show you as a lefty, footwork, exactly the same, right? Rifle in my shoulder, but if I want to keep the rifle in my shoulder and be able to hit that corner faster, I'm taking a false step, I'm leaning my body into the doorway See that difference? Like this. This way you don't have to play it backwards and forwards, Mitchell, I can just do it myself. <laughs> I'm turning my body in to get a little peak because if I kept myself upright and I didn't take that little 45 out and I just step like this, I'm, that probably just gave me a splinter. I'm having to ride this in and as I'm breaking that plane, I'm coming way off into this you know, middle of the room that if we would pied and panned it would have been clear. So remember the context, guys. This footwork is about delivering your processor and your weapon system to hit that hard corner as soon as possible. So. And there's three ways that we've actually discussed in detail yep. about positioning of the rifle uh, when going through threshold. And that's going to be over the shoulder, under the arm, and keeping the gun in the shoulder in area 45, which we've all discussed in detail on our other videos. Yeah. And all of those... Yeah, link, yeah. It, link, it, link it in the corner. And then, what do they all work with? This the same this basic freaking footwork. footwork. Yeah, it's yeah. the same footwork. This tactical twister that we've uh, that's it. That we've done. So one more time, we'll go through them. Uh, just flow, hit, hit the high points. Flow yeah. button hook. All right. So footwork is key. Um, so if for whatever reason I messed up and started like this, right? I'm leaning in, trying to get close to that wall, right? And want to do that button hook. You see the extra step that I have to take, right? If I'm going to do the flow here, it's an extra step because my footwork was off. So again, footwork is messed up. I'm not positioned properly. So if I get ready to do that flow, I take that step here. They have to take another step in order to deliver the gun in there. We call it the stormtrooper shuffle. Yeah. So proper footwork outside is going to allow you to get through the doorway a lot easier if you get yourself set up. So think, so think about, is my footwork right to do this flow? Oh, now it is, roger that. So we step forward and deliver that gun right in there into that corner to clear that area, that sector of fire. For the button hook, remember, we gotta take an additional step to get our body to be able to turn to get it through that threshold. So if I'm set up here, I take that step like this, take the gun out of the shoulder, start to leave with the head and eyes, where am I going this direction, and then feed it to that area of unknown. Footwork is crucial. You can set this up in your garage um, to get some solid dry fire you know not only weapons presentation but footwork presentation through the doorway and it's a yeah. it's a big helper man well, one small thing i'll add and then we'll we'll uh, let you guys get back to doing whatever it is in your mom's basement naruto uh, <laughs> naruto yes um <laughs> some people say and and some of our instructors teach and it's a low, lowest common denominator thing to actually strike the far side of the threshold on your button hook and that that will help give you a positive launching point I don't like that because it makes you do this and make a bunch of noise. Um, and you will have students looking for it. They're literally looking for the threshold. So they're like, oh, there's the corner. Literally just walk, right? You're literally just going to turn your hips, turn your hips, take a step into the room. And you don't have to impact this. To me, that's um, very like, okay, here's how to walk, you know, and that's literally what we're doing. But there's disadvantages to it. If you have to learn it starting that way, instead of, I have to hit my foot on the door frame, that's fine. But look at the angle. These are angled for a reason. Turn the hips, turn the hips, get into the room looking that direction. It's that simple. All of this stuff is simple. Like Jason said, go home, practice it. If you need to put tape on your floor, do it. If you don't have a door frame, your wife's afraid of you, you know, raking your uh, carry handle along this or whatever it is, you're using your... Uh, your FAL with your baby poop green and you detect that giant box mag takes a chunk of your drywall out. I get it. So maybe put some cones, little soccer cones like mm -hmm. what you do. Check out Jason's Instagram, Ransom Tactical Solutions. He does a ton of these videos on all this. He's done them a dozen times and it's got little cones that he set up. 
Oh boy. I, I just call it a figure eight drill where yeah. I set it up and go in and out, in and out. Can you show us that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it gets set up like so, just normal. If I'm gonna do the flow, I'll, I'll flow in, turn around and I'll flow right back out. So it's, it's super easy. Get set up, gun goes in, clear that corner, and I just rotate around and I get set up again. So um, the same setup, rotate, get set up over here, then I'm gonna do, hit that button hook now, right? So get the flow, the, the footwork here. I get set up again, so I'm gonna do a button hook back into there. So I get set up, footwork, important, false step, rotate it around, bring that gun over here. So I literally just did a figure eight flow, turn around flow, button hook, turn around button hook. And it's just a little figure eight drill you can do in your garage and get mad, mad reps yep. um, with little to no setup and film yourself, film yourself yes. doing these. Huge. That way you can look at, you know, the point of view, because everybody likes POV, <laughs> your point of view going through to see if you're protruding the Repent. rifle through the doorway. Repent and turn to Christ. <laughs> Sorry. Touch, touch grass, get sun. <laughs> That's it. Um, uh, turning your your rifle in board to, to see if it's if, if it's extending past so film yourself doing this um, He likes to do it in silkies <sighs> Just got there and train man get some pretty much it um, So if you're interested in this kind of thing you want in-person instruction on it uh, We do consultations we do one-on-one -on -one stuff we do uh, Consultation what is it? What is that? What are... uh, that that's like a word that means we come out and check out what you're doing and mm -hmm. tell you if we think it's good or bad And if it's good we add some good more good stuff if it's bad we might shake the whole game up, but we'll come out and observe what you're doing and say, hey, we think you should try this, this, and this. And we create a uh, custom training package in a lot of time, put you through that package, and then reevaluate at the end. And we've had some pretty good results with that, really good experiences with that. One-on-one um, -on -one might be like, hey, you know, Jason, I want to do six hours uh, on solo CQB. Can I come out to y'all's shoot house and uh, you train me one-on-one -on, -one on it? Absolutely. We'll create a custom training course on whatever it is you want and uh, invoice you and then of course we have open enrollment classes which will be here at our new shoot house we haven't really talked about much we're going to do a whole video on it as well but this is here in baton rouge we're working on a bunch of improvements we're doing a video on that uh, we're in the infancy of this uh this project but we're going to be doing open enrollment here um, open enrollment meaning if you're an american citizen you qualify as long as you can pass a background check come out to training we're not going to gatekeep and say oh you're a welder you don't need to know how to walk through doors or whatever else it is um, so check out our website. We do have one, um, www.oriontraininggroup.com. And then uh, there's courses listed. We have medical, firearms, CQB. CQB program for us is flexible search. Click that. It's in chronological order, which means the one at the top is closest to you in space time. And as you scroll down, uh, they'll be farther away. And uh, follow the registration instructions. We hope to see you at a class. Thank you for watching what was probably a 30-minute video of uh, a lot of fun for us. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Final thoughts? No, man. I think we covered it all, bro. All Stay right. tuned for the next drop, drip. Yeah. Drip drop. And if you haven't watched our other videos, please watch them because they give more context to this video. It's a series, so you're going to get the full picture the more you watch. Yeah, flip-flopping and pop-locking. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and scene. <laughs>